Edwin, this isn't the first award we've had from the CHIPS Act. We had Intel uh, not so long ago. So what does the scale of what TSMC's received look like compared to other recipients? Uh, I think it's about uh, the second largest we've seen so far. Intel, by far, uh, was the biggest award recipient. But I think uh, TSMC being close behind is a, I think, you know, underscores both its scale and the amount of investment uh, needed to keep TSMC at the forefront of advanced uh, chip making. I think we're going to see more to come, uh, not just American firms, but uh, Asian ones like, like TSMC. I think Samsung and Hynix uh, remain in the running uh, for similar sized awards. Edwin, if if we put this in context, this is, uh, you know, this is part of the broader Biden administration's ambition about self-building. It's about onshoring, friendshoring, uh, and domestic robustness in the chip industry. Is it delivering, and is there, is there much more to go uh, in, in this CHIPS Act? Uh, so that's a good question. I mean, it's a very long-term ambition. It's not just a Biden administration one. You could argue it is a, a broader U.S. strategic objective to onshore not just manufacturing, but also the production of components critical to the economy, to future technology, to, yes, the military and various aspects uh, of national security. I, um, you know, there certainly is a geopolitical element to this, and so we're talking about a year's long horizon. I, um, I think we've seen since the 2022 CHIPS Act that uh, the administration has uh, moved very, fairly swiftly, not just in granting awards, but also going back to the geopolitical aspect, to putting in place policies to contain uh, its rival in China. Uh, so I, I guess initial signs are this is this and other awards are a win for the Biden administration, but we'll have to see you know, over a longer term horizon how this plays mm -hmm. out.